Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, so my name is Sasha. I'm the CEO of Buns. Uh, just for starters, can I get a show of hands of how many people know what Buns is? Wicked. Love you, Buns. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to just brief everyone in the room who doesn't understand or know what Buns is. So there's something called the Bunsiverse. Uh, that's how we refer to it at, at HQ. Uh, the Bunsiverse uh, was started by Emily Bitts. She created the first Facebook group about four years ago. And uh, it was a place for people to come and barter things and trade things with each other. Uh, and it quickly expanded into um, probably about 200 to 300 different groups in around maybe 60 cities around the world. Um, now, uh, the, the ecosystem evolved and we decided we were gonna build a sustainable home for the community. So we launched an app called Buns. Uh, and now the app has been in market for probably, I think like, like two, three years now. Um, and we decided, as we, as we were looking at the numbers, last year we saw that uh, the, the number of transactions completed over the course of uh, 2017 uh, was limited. It started to grow and it's kind of hit like a barrier. We're trying to figure out what that barrier was when it comes to barter. Uh, and so what we realized was that there's a medium of exchange issue on the platform. Uh, and what that means is that at some point, I didn't have what you wanted and you didn't have what I wanted, so we couldn't really transact, or there was an issue where I gave you a gift card and that gift card didn't have a balance on it. So we kind of encountered this natural, we almost engineered a problem. Uh, so we engineered the conditions to introduce a currency. And so Emily and I got together and decided, okay, how do we create a currency that's in favor of the people that use the platform uh, and not necessarily just banking on dollars as, as we understand them today? So we created BITS, it's pronounced BITS, it stands for Bonds Trading Zone, uh, to quantify the volume of usage in the last nine months alone, there's been over 2.5 million transactions in our currency. And this is not like, uh, you know, exchange volumes, for those of you who are technical on um, blockchain and crypto, it's, it's not like your typical cryptocurrency. Uh, it, it lives in the Bonds app, and you have the option to send it to Ethereum mainnet if you want to have ownership of it, or you can keep it in the Bonds app and use it. So really, I want to talk just really briefly about blockchain, because there's a ton of crazy news and stuff that's happening in the space right now. And then I'll go back to the story of buttons, because it's important to set the stage. Uh, so blockchain is not a technology that use case. Has anyone ever heard that? No? OK, well, this is like something that's commonly thrown around in the space. It's like, it's a technology, but we don't know what to do with it. Uh, really, what it actually is is a platform for change. Um, it's a trustless, immutable, and decentralized computer system. And, and really what that does is, is it has no real value to the end consumer for the most part, because you don't know, you know, obviously it's prohibitive from a technology perspective to interact with. Uh, but what it allows us to do is to build on a new base and create a new system. So uh, as I mentioned before, you can hold bits in the Buns app, in your own wallet on the Buns app, or you can send it to Ethereum mainnet, so you can hold it in a decentralized infrastructure. So at this point, you're probably thinking, like, what the hell does this have to do with like, retail, right? Like, this is all very technical and kind of crazy and blockchain and crypto. Uh, so what we decided, and the reason we did all this, is because we decided that the way revenues were being generated and centralized on existing platforms didn't acknowledge the people that made them valuable. Um, so you know, if it was following what's going on with Facebook and a number of other platforms right now, even Google, um, that, you know, even in today's news, what, what was released was that uh, you know, they were circumventing um, privacy by creating another corporation to be able to access information about you and pay you to install software to spy on you to figure out more about you beyond what they have on their platforms. So we have a trust problem. Um, so what we're doing is a bit different. So every time a business interacts with us, uh, and we do something called a Bits Daily Airdrop, 60% of the value that we take in goes to you. So we, we make sure that the lion's share of the value that we take in from advertisers and businesses goes to you, and you have a choice as to whether or not you want to interact with them. Uh, and like, so I think on a daily basis, there's about like 15 to 20,000 people that do this. Is there anyone in the room that has done a base daily airdrop? Okay, so quite a few of you. So uh, that's kind of why, that's how, how you earn our currency. And uh, bits, uh, it's really a value distribution model of the currency. So a business buys bits, there's a 40% network fee. We want to drive that fee. Our goal is to drive ourselves almost out of business, drive that network fee down to zero and get to the point where we have a sustainable model where the users are earning 100% of the value when a business interacts with the platform. And then 30% is spent on local shops. So the way this works is 
Uh, today, this is the daily airdrop. Uh, if you have the buttons up on your phone, you can interact with this. Uh, and you answer a question. So this particular question here was, let's say, sponsored by KitchenAid. And they're asking you, what appliance would you love to receive as a gift? And your response, you then get a reward for interacting with that brand. You don't have to do it, but you choose to. That information then allows them to revisit you later with, to reward you further with the relevant product that you responded to. So it's a really simple system that allows you to interact with the brand, realize value in the marketplace, and then you actually have the ability to spend that currency at over 250 stores across Canada. So has anyone ever eaten at IQ Foods? Or has anyone ever been to Drake Hotel? Right? These are all places that accept our currency. So you can walk in, say, I want to spend bits at this shop, and buy this salad, and you can use your phone on the Buns app, pay them in your currency, and walk out with the food. Uh, to quantify this, a million dollars uh, in 2018 was spent by users at local retail shops in Toronto, Ottawa, Vancouver, and Montreal. So uh, that, that's kind of a, the first time we've discussed and only talked about how much this has had an impact on people, particularly in Toronto, because the vast majority of our users are here. Uh, so this is a video I wanted to show you. It's really cool. This is the Merchant app, but they said I can't show a video. <laughs> um, this is the Merchant app that's on the Merchant Square in beta. Uh, so we wanted to make it really easy for businesses to be able to receive our currency and go from bits to dollars. Uh, so this is something that's available to some of the merchants right now. Uh, I think uh, Strange Little Coffee uses it and a couple of others. And again, to quantify things from a local business perspective, uh, there's some shops that, have, shops that have done over $40,000 in sales in a month in our currency. And now there are some shops that are doing over 30% of their total transaction volumes in our currency. So it's pretty amazing what's happening. Uh, these are some of our partners, some of the places you can spend bits. Uh, if you're ever walking around the city and you see the sign, you can go in and buy whatever you want in bits. Uh, and so if you do, don't have buttons on your phone, you can uh, uh, sign up today, activate your wallet. When you do, you just enter a retail to use a referral code, and you'll get an extra bonus. And so at $20 worth of value, you can go spend it in one of these shops. And really what we believe in is paid people on platforms. Um, it's kind of a, a, a different take on what's happening in the world. Uh, right now, your, your, your data and your value within a network is not respected, and I think a lot of brands are looking for a way to interact with you that respects you as the person. Um, like, if you imagine Facebook or any one of these larger platforms that are making billions of dollars in revenue from advertising, and you take all the people away, they're worthless. No VC would touch them. So you are the, you are the value. And like, we need to acknowledge that, and I think a lot of brands want to acknowledge that, and that's why we're starting to see our model succeed. Uh, so thank you. May your trades be friendly. And if you want to, you can follow me on Buns. My handle is at zero cool. It's a hacker's reference, if you're old enough to know that. Uh, and uh, in the coming months, we're really excited. I wanted to just throw this out there. We're going to be launching a number of social features uh, on the Buns app. So thank you very much. I love you, Buns. You guys are the best. And, uh, uh, so really quickly, what do some of your merchants uh, what are some of the use cases with bits? Um, like, what, what are they using for? Uh, so it's a medium of exchange. So it's almost like a way to value your data without, like, if I'm giving you 10 cents, it's a really shitty experience. Like, can I let swear? <laughs> I'm going to do it anyways. Yeah, it. It's a really <laughs> shitty experience to be like, okay, give me your banking information. I need to deposit the 10 cents in your bank, and then you can go spend it however you want. So the way it works is, is you receive bits, and that bits acts as a medium of exchange to go buy something from a business, and that business has a redemption value with us. Um, but we also have turned on the ability, we're starting to turn on the ability for businesses to use those bits to do a number of other things on the application layer and network. So something to the effect of, if you had you know, sold a bunch of goods and you wanted to take off the table, let's say 70% of the amount you, 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 know, you received in bids and get dollars for it, and then take the 30% to reach more new customers on the platform. So there's things like that that a business will be able to do and with social, uh, the stuff that we're doing called Zones. Uh, that's coming out in March-ish, I think. We're gonna go for that. Uh, that will also give users the ability to do more than just peer-to-peer -peer transactions and B2C transactions in our currency. So you'll actually need bits to be able to interact in new ways. It's a youth, like, fully functional utility token. Thank you. You're very welcome. Yeah. Hi. Hey, so I'm like an OG Bunzer. <laughs> <laughs> and Buns and Pet Zone. Cool. So I have a question around switching mediums from Facebook to the app. So I think it's very analogous to 
what a retailer or a CPG or might go through from in-store to online or vice versa and maintaining trust because you know there's something so magical about uh, meeting a bunzer at TTC station and you know trading something and getting to know this person really quickly um, and I wonder you know are there any experiences you can share from moving towards the original you know Facebook group to the app which is maybe feeling like maybe a little bit less personal or maybe sure. you know, a little bit more corporate or whatever it is you know what are some yeah, sure. I don't think it, I, I think so. Emily, Emily was the original founder of the Facebook group, and I think my res, Emily and I, when we first decided, like we shook hands and kind of she held my hand, and she like didn't let me go, and she's like, we need to make a promise of two things. One is you know the community will always come first, and two is that as we monetize and build this into something that's sustainable, because I want a home for buns that's sustainable, and I wanted the same thing. Um, we're going to make sure that the, the majority of the value is given to the user. So I think like I think that was the core, which said like let's do the right thing here as we build a home for Buzz that's sustainable. And I think we looked at it not like oh yeah, like people love to put this narrative of like oh it's like a corporate thing now. It's like well we, we just gave a million dollars to people who use the application to go spend it, and we think that they deserve it because they're the value really. And so I think that like it's really easy to get kind of like we wanted to build a home that respected people. And, and a way for brands to engage with us that gave um, kind of the value of the network directly to that user. And I think that like, we see on a regular basis, um, so I, let me put it this way, 2.5 million transactions were completed in the currency. I'd probably say somewhere in the ballpark of like four or five million were completed without the currency. So you know, I think there's a recent stat that was thrown out um, on Twitter or something by our team that was like every minute of every day, 24 hours a day, a trade is completed. Um, so I, I think that like we didn't lose that spirit, we'll never give that up. And I think had we given it up, it would have looked like us being like, ah, oh, you know what, you can post stuff for sale, we'll just take a painted rail and we'll take a profit on that painted rail instead of do the opposite. So, yeah, we we're trying to stay really true to who we are, what we believe. Yeah, um, so you guys mentioned a lot of like brick and mortar, like coming to a coffee shop and spending on for this. So, yeah. um, do you guys, do you any like e-commerce or do you have any plans for that? Yeah, we do, yeah. So uh, there was a couple uh, partners, merchants along the way that accepted bits. Um, uh, a couple of crypto exchanges allowed you to fund their accounts with bits. Um, we do get approached by a number of digital partners that want to kind of use bits as a loyalty system or an entry point uh, for businesses to engage with you digitally. Um, I think what we're looking to do is make sure that we standardize that process in a really clean way that never compromises the experience for our users. It's really, you need to nail down and be really good at one thing before you expand to something else. Um, and I think we're probably, I'd say maybe like, you know, five, five to six months away from being able to really support digital integrations um, in a way that we're comfortable with. Because all you have to do is really show a QR code on your site and then I scan it with my phone to hit pay, enter my code, my PIN code, and you're going to have the bits in your wallet. So it's not, it's not difficult to do it, but to make sure that if there's any issues in the reconciliation process it is more important. Like, we need to make sure that if our users are sending your company bits digitally, we need to make sure that you're giving them the value that you said you were going to give them. Because then it becomes a problem on us, which is like, hey, I gave my value to this company. This company did this with it. And, you know, I'm coming to you because you're buns and you guys know what's up. So... But yeah, our plan is to go there. Hi. Um, actually, just did the trade right before this event. Yes. So, <laughs> yay, bounce. And I, I had a question. Sure. How did you guys deal with conversion? Like, from the, like, the Facebook zones are amazing, and I'm also, like, as I said before, a part of so many of them. Like, I'm just curious, because I've tried using the app, but I'm actually, like, I didn't like yeah, okay. this. I didn't like using that. So I'm curious, like, how the numbers translated? Have you get, have you gotten people independently off the Facebook group, so on and so um, forth? Probably Maybe both. Like, yeah, I think it'd be both. It'd be like so. Okay, my, uh, first of all, our position on the Facebook groups is we don't want to take anything away from our community. No matter, like, if they choose to congregate there, that's fantastic. And like, it's more connections, it's more people, it's better distribution of goods. That that's all part of our goal. Um, so we always have the, you know, we already admins on a number of the groups. 
And so um, we always kind of took the position of like, we want to do right by our community, irrespective of which platform they're on. Um, and I think the way we look at it is like, it's our responsibility to build a better experience for, for the people. And if we can do that, then that's fantastic. Um, and there is a delta now between what you can do on the Facebook groups and what you can do on the application. Um, you don't, like there's no bits earning on the application, which means like, you can't go buy coffee once every week if you answer the survey, this kind of thing, right? So you kind of give up something, but it's whatever you choose. Um, and I think we had a big conversation early on. It was just like, we'll never close the groups just because we want the users to move over. But that was never an option. Yeah. You're welcome. We have one last question, and then we're going to have to, unfortunately, move on. Hi there. In addition to the uh, retail focus and the e-commerce question, um, four things I'm wondering if you guys do and if you're thinking of doing them. So peer-to-peer um, -peer transfers, donations, um, cashing out your bits for you know any transfer real currency, and on top of all that, do you do any gamification or multiplier to incentivize behavior or reward merchants or reward you know focusing a certain multipliers actually, so rewarding with a greater power of your spend. Sure. Uh, yeah. So peer-to-peer -peer transactions, you can do that right on the application. Uh, there's two ways to do it. I can just you can open up your wallet, show me your QR, and I can scan it. Or in a conversation, I can just hit the little plus button in the bottom and send you bits. Um, uh, donations we consider. Uh, it's something that we're not sure uh, what the best way to integrate is, but I think we've kind of packaged it up from a priorities perspective with our digital um, platforms, because a lot of times you don't necessarily directly interact with that uh, charity. So we want to make sure that we've solved the, the digital integration correctly. Um, the next one was, I'm sorry. Cash out. Cash out. So you, you did have the ability for some period of time to be able to move between bits. So you could do that today if you really wanted to. What you could do if you're technical is you can send bits to Ethereum mainnet and then convert Ethereum, uh, Ethereum mainnet through a DEX, which is a decentralized exchange. You can convert it to Bitcoin or Ethereum or any other altcoin. So you could do that. Um, and then you could use a, an exchange, a centralized exchange as an off ramp to get dollars out, which is super cumbersome and I don't recommend it, but you could do it. Yeah, there's just like, it's so prohibitive technologically that it doesn't make sense to do it. And what was the last one? Uh, gamification. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we definitely look at things like um, uh, multipliers. And I think that as we roll out the next stage of monetization, meaning user monetization, like, you know, customer monetization, us earning more as people on the platforms, uh, you'll see accelerants to your payouts. Um, so, and we've always toyed with things like if you did a trade, you would give you more bits, or like if you did this or did that. So we, we toy with ideas and we kind of have to run them, so test them through a, an economic model um, to make sure that they're viable uh, and sustainable. Um, so, but for the most part, uh, we look at it, but it's not something that's going to probably be in the market until like two releases after Zones comes out. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Yeah.